Hello, everybody. So today we're on a little adventure. Uh, I'm on my way to Burbank. Um, I paid to take the Walt Disney Studio Tour. Um, now you have to be a member of D23 and uh, the pricing, the tickets are hard to get. They seem to sell out pretty fast. If you're a general member of D23, a weekday ticket is $149 and a weekend ticket is $159. If you're a gold member, uh, which I am, a weekday ticket is 99 and a weekend ticket is 109. Um, now this is uh, uh, a tour that they say you cannot film, but as I understand it, you can take photos. So I'm gonna take as many photos as uh, I can and then tell you afterwards how, uh, how it was. Anyway, off we go. Hey everybody. So I just completed the tour and I have to say it was fantastic. Um, about a three hour tour, no pun intended. Um, uh, well worth it. A special thank you to Andrea, who was just as cute as a button and a wealth of knowledge. She said she's only been given tours about a year and a half or so, but I thought she did a tremendous job. And her security guard, Kevin, very nice guy. Um, also a wealth of knowledge so thank you both uh to them uh they are very very strict on uh, what you can photograph and there is absolutely no video of any kind but i captured a gajillion photos and uh, i'm going to try to cobble together something for you to see and it'll do a little narration to sort of try to explain the tour because you're outside and inside uh, but it was just absolutely amazing a couple of the highlights for me, it was I got to see uh, the Legends handprints, Ward Kimball. Uh, that was a treat. And also, I got to hold an actual Academy Award that was, uh, uh, well, that Walt Disney had won. I've forgotten now for what uh, uh, picture, but I think he's won 32 overall, so this was one of many. It was in the archives, and they actually uh, let you hold it. And I did get a picture uh, with the Academy Award. That was quite a hoot. Anyway, uh, so what you're about to see is the best of the, the pictures that I took, and I'll try to do a little narration. I apologize. Uh, it probably won't be the best narration, but it'll give you a sense of uh, what the tour is all about. And again, I think, uh, I think it's well, well worth, even if you're just a, a general member, what did I say, it's 150 bucks. I think it's well worth the $150. Uh, it's sort of a once-in-a-lifetime thing, I think. Again, you do get to see Walt's office, the 3H office, uh, and, a, and you go to the archives and a myriad of other things. It was really, really uh, just terrific. So without further ado, here's a montage of photos of the Walt Disney Studios tour narrated by yours truly. Anyway, uh, in this world, when you can be anything you want, you be kind, you be humble, you be forgiving, and uh, I hope you enjoy the, the picture show here. Thanks again. Bye. All right, so here's the Walt Disney Studios entrance, at least for the tour. Uh, this is 500 Buena Vista Street. Uh, you check in with the guard and they give you a little yellow wristband and uh, they'll point you where to park, uh, which you'll see here in a moment. You'll see the blue Mini. I sort of zoom in on it. And then they direct you to actually a very old building. It's known as the Hyperion Bungalow, but this is actually the original studios that Disney had in uh, Los Angeles, and it was moved to uh, Burbank in 1940. But this is where Mickey Mouse and Snow White was actually created. Now it's a conference room uh, and meeting area for the tour. Uh, here in just a moment, you'll see that tan building is also part of the Hyperion Studios that were moved uh, to Burbank in 1940. And a lot of people were really fascinated by this Mickey Mouse uh, topiary. I'm not sure exactly why, but uh, I was more intrigued by the wrought iron fence around the topiary. Note the not so hidden uh, Mickeys. Uh, it was a little rainy to, uh, this day, but uh, very, very nice. Uh, the studio is very much like a college campus. Um, very comfortable places to sit, as you can see, maybe eat lunch and contemplate your life. Uh, 
again, you'll see some more benches there. Lots of trees, uh, grass to sit on. Uh, but the tour eventually moves us along. Here's the commissary where the employees can obviously get lunch. Uh, they eventually take us to the Sherman Brothers stage. This is where all of the music was once composed um, for all the various movies. And I don't know at what point they named it the Sherman Brothers stage, but there you have it. Uh, this is kind of interesting. You see this uh, street sign. This is actually a prop um, for the 1941 Reluctant Dragon movie. They sort of set this up uh, as a gag, and I guess they liked it so much they just uh, kept it. Um, kind of interesting. And then here we see Pluto's Corner. I'm not sure when this was put in, uh, but I'm assuming you get the joke. What was kind of interesting, you can see that there's three paw prints there in the local depression. No, not four, because his leg is lifted for the fire hydrant. Uh, this is a theater uh, that we ended up walking by. I think this is where they show pictures and stuff to dignitaries and, and CEOs and things of that nature. Um, kind of interesting, very pretty. Um, eventually we move into, uh, I believe it's the animation building, yes. Uh, and again, they, they won't let you take pictures too much of the hall, really just let you take pictures of pictures. There's a lot of offices and things. I, I think they're trying to keep as much private as humanly possible. But this is where they sort of talk about how e even animation gets storyboarded so uh, time isn't wasted uh, doing too much. And there's some very pretty uh, drawings and stuff as you can see here as we sort of meander down the various halls. I kind of got a kick out of uh, the Evil Queen. These are for Carrie more than anything. Um, but kind of interesting to see they've been hanging on this wall a very, very long time. Um, that was on the floor. I thought that was kind of fun. Uh, no real purpose to it other than it was on the floor. Now we went down the stairs. This is the underground tunnel that went from animation over to ink and paint. And they used this tunnel so that uh, I guess none of the cells and things of that nature ever got dirty um, and apparently a lot of shenanigans went on in this hallway over the years. Just a picture of Winnie the Pooh. Who doesn't love Winnie the Pooh? Um, this is where uh, they sort of talked about how cells get painted front and back. Darker colors take longer to dry, lighter colors. Um, kind of interesting. Uh, we we're in that hallway for a good spell. Then we go upstairs and this is the films of Walt Disney which there's a myriad of posters um, there's Snow White. I don't know if these are originals or not, but here for your viewing pleasure, just a, a few of them. There's just a zillion. My presumption is some are originals and some are probably repos, obviously. Uh, I think back in the old days, they didn't keep a lot. A lot of stuff got thrown out. We're on the third floor there. You can see there's the theater that we were uh, walking by. Um, we are heading into uh, Walt Disney's uh, offices at this point. You can see straight ahead there, that's the famous picture of uh, Epcot. This is one of the animation rooms very close to Walt's office. Um, I don't know if it was always here or just put here for purposes of the tour, but there you have it. Kind of fun. Uh, very, very interesting. Very, very old. Now we're heading into uh, Studio 3H or Office 3H. This is uh, Tommy Welk's office, which was Walt Disney's, one of his receptionists. Uh, you can see the cabinet full of awards. This appears all over the place because really this is all part of the archives today, most of this stuff. Some chairs that they didn't want you sitting in. Note the ashtray. There was a ton of ashtrays. Ashtrays everywhere. Cool typewriter. Very old desk. Um, again, the offices themselves are quite small. They took us in eight at a time, another couple of ashtrays and an address or appointment book, um, supposedly all original to um, Tommy's office at the time or Mrs. Welk's. Now we've walked into Walt's main office. Uh, uh, again, note the ashtrays. There's a little coffee table with a, a, a couch there, a side table with some of Walt's crap. Uh, again, he really, really liked miniatures. I thought the jet was pretty cool and interesting. Um, obviously, another shot of the jet. Lots of pictures of his daughters and ashtrays everywhere. Uh, some old phones. And then on the uh, just above the couch, that's the original bird cage that I guess inspired the tiki room and some animatronics. 
That's the Sherman Brothers piano where uh, they would entertain Walt uh, um, and sing his favorite song or play his favorite song. This is out the window. I just got a kind of kick of sort of a non-hidden Mickey. Then you go into another office, which is where all the real work was done. You can note how much lower that office desk and stuff uh, is. I think a lot of people used to sit on the floor. You can see some pictures of Epcot. And this is all archival, all original stuff. Walt and his brother Roy. Very, very interesting. Um, kind of another shot. Again, very, very small offices when you're actually in there with eight people. It can be very, very cramped. Um, he really dug airplanes because uh, there's an, another model plane. I think that's actually the Mickey one. And then I noticed this. And I had to find out what that was. And you know what it was? Walt Disney's briefcase. And I thought that was pretty cool. Or overnight bag, most likely. And this is the famous kitchen that's in that office. You've all heard about it. Apparently, he could hit a button and it would, uh, the doors would open and close. But uh, GE put it in for him, and, and there it is. And then you, you kind of walk out of that office into a little uh, area that showed uh, pictures of when the place was being built. And it circles you back around to that animation room uh, again. And this is one of the gifts they give you, which I thought was kind of cool. A little pen. And then you get uh, another couple of pens uh, that represented some personal Oscars. And they take you out here to uh, this portion, very famous. You've all seen Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. This is the Legends uh, uh, Corridor. Um, uh, anybody who's deemed a legend gets a uh, statuette that looks obviously smaller than this, but uh, pretty, pretty cool. And as you walk around, um, I, I was very, very curious. You know me and Hidden Mickeys, but you kind of spin around the backside here, maybe eventually. Um, it'll bring you around, and you're like, hmm, that's interesting. Let's get closer to that roll of film. And as you get a little bit closer, a little bit closer, and you look inside, not a Hidden Mickey, but a Hidden Mouse. So that was kind of fun. Um, statue of Roy and Minnie and then uh, I believe there's a statue of Walt and Mickey the partner statue you'll see that at Disneyland and Disney World uh, you get really close to it here but at this point I was on the hunt to find some legend plaques uh, that I desperately wanted to see here in this uh, this area there's Loita Tombs now she doesn't have handprints there like Mark Hamill. It's because she passed away before she was deemed a legend and wasn't able to put her hands in the bronze, I guess. There's Carrie Fisher, obviously George Lucas. Um, I was still on the hunt. Tony Baxter, uh, Big Thunder Mountain fame. Frank Thomas, and next will be uh, Ollie Johnson, uh, famous uh, uh, old nine men. And the guy I was looking for, Ward Kimball, uh, my favorite animator and just uh, all around hoot. Then we headed into the Frank G. Wells building. Uh, this is part of the archival area. You kind of walk in, there's a Starbucks there. I think this is another area for people to be able to sit and eat. Um, something I got a kick out of. Uh, you can see that on eBay, just sort of a souvenir hard hat from the 50s. Those are the actual Mary Poppins uh, wood blocks from the movie. Um, a little drawing of Mary Poppins, uh, kind of seen in Saving uh, Mr. Banks, I think. That is Roy's briefcase. And then I thought it was kind of fun, the Bunsen and Beaker's Lab, sort of a deep Muppets cut. And then those things I just showed you were behind glass there. Then they take us into this archival room where another nice young lady uh, was kind enough to show us... Uh, those are some original opening day Disneyland tickets. There they are for the press and then the next day uh, for regular folks. That's Kylo Ren and Ben Solo's lightsabers uh, are in the archives. That's the very first ticket ever sold at Disneyland in Case and Lucite, I believe. Uh, that's D uh, Walt Disney's desk from the Hyperion uh, uh, studio they brought out for the 100th anniversary. Really cool desk. I thought it was awesome. And then like a corner, I don't know, where you coat, where you hang your coats. Um, there's the actual statue that a, a Legends person would get. Kind of fun. Again, this is a very small room, but she sat down. That lady there with the purple gloves showed us a bunch of stuff. 
There's me holding the Oscar that I mentioned earlier. Really, really cool. This is one of the uh, uh, animation cameras that, that captures stuff. Another animation camera, that's the one that Disney has a patent on. And I noticed something there on that reel. Does that look familiar? It looks just like that pin I showed you just moments ago that they give to us. And then they take us out uh, into this area. And I thought that was kind of fun. There's the only hidden mini, if you will, amongst uh, hidden Mickeys. Now we're in the ink and painting area. Uh, they kind of walk you through here pretty fast. Uh, again, you can't take pictures going down the halls or a lot of the rooms. So here's some pictures of old paint. Uh, at the very end of this hall, they wouldn't let us take a picture of it though, is another doorway that takes you into uh, Lucasfilm. Again, for privacy reasons, I don't think they want you messing around too much. There's Evan Rude. I thought that was kind of fun. It's kind of a dying art, pen and ink with computers. Again, a beautiful campus type feel. Uh, here's sort of the map of the entire studio. And then uh, this is interesting. This is a shot uh, where the old mill used to be and there used to be doors that opened up. I managed to find a picture online. There's what it once looked like. Kind of fun, just a little homage. And then the, the tour kind of ends really backstage uh, at the stages, which, you know, they, they talk more than anything. Uh, you kind of get a sense of it there. And then the tour, as I said before, ends at the gift shop and studio store. So there you have it. I hope you got a kick. That's the official Walt Disney tour. I highly recommend you see it for yourself. Thank you.